everyone, welcome back. Now today's video, I actually have to start with an apology. I have to apologize to my very dear friend, Miss Sandy Moore, down in Florida. Sandy is the president of Seagrist Farms. Now you guys will remember, we filmed a few videos down there when I was down there. We're going back at least two years because this was pre-pandemic that I was down there. And uh, I figured there's going to be multiple parts to this series. But at some point in time, I guess shuffling files around on my laptop, I misplaced a bunch of stuff and I thought it was gone. And then today, I was moving around. I was honestly looking for a certain picture of something that I took at a botanical garden while I was down in Florida for something I wanted to use in another video as a backdrop. And in looking for that slide, or that picture, slide showing my age, I came across this file that this weird name and all this other stuff that I thought was long gone was all in that file. And in that file was all that glorious footage of this amazing paradise on earth place called Seagrist Farms. Now in part one of the video series, Sandy took us to the Reskin plant and that is the facility where they do a lot of breeding. You guys saw the scope of the size of this, all the glowfish are done there. It is absolutely over the top. So for today, we're gonna start back there because I still have some other footage that's gonna show you a real unique side of what makes Seagrist special. Uh, and then we're gonna have an interview with somebody that's pretty seriously important to their organization. His name is James. And James is the aquaculturist. He is the aquatic health manager for all of Seagrist Inc. Holdings. And he basically oversees all their facilities he assesses, assesses the health issues and concerns, and he establishes all the protocols and treatments should they be required. This guy has a massive job, a massive undertaking. So I'm very, very excited that we get to sit down with James, poke his brain a little bit and get an idea and some insight in what goes on behind the scenes. And then maybe in the next part, we're gonna actually go and start looking at their main facility, and you will see truly the size and scope of how incredible this place is. So my friends, thank you kindly for your patience. I never intended this to happen this way. And thank you kindly to my dear friend Sandy Moore for allowing me to come down and spend that time with her in Florida. Hopefully we get to do it again once the world opens up a little bit more. But without any further ado, my friends, let's get to it. Alright guys, well this might, might, might not look anything exciting online. It looks like a bunch of rows of tanks covered up in tarps and stuff like that. But this one actually has a very, very important message. At Seagrist, they're not only just selling tropical fish and raising tropical fish for the pet industry. They are actually strongly involved with all sorts of facets of the hobby of, of keeping tropical fish. They do conservational efforts and one of this, and the actual row that you're looking at right now, Sandy was telling me, these are all actually fish that are in quarantine right now for a large public aquarium. Right, so not every public aquarium has really large quarantine areas, especially when they're about to grand open. They need, they need to quarantine um, fish according to the AZA guidelines and we can offer, we do offer that service for them. So there's a public aquarium in the middle of the country that's about to open and you know, the time is always tentative. Yeah. Um, but they need to be in quarantine for, for a minimum of 30 days. So this is a biosecure building um, and we're even, they're covered to maintain the biosecurity and to cut down on the light level because we wanna make sure the fish are as comfortable and as clean as they could possibly be before they're transported yeah. by live haul to Yeah, the you don't aquarium. just want, and also stop from jumping. You come in here and flick on the light switch and they'll freak out, right? right? right. Yeah. Okay, guys, you guys saw the, the things downstairs that I just showed you about the, the, the quarantine section for, for public aquarium. Well, Sandy's really showing us a bit more of a treat of stuff that's being on hold here for a public aquarium. It looks like to me like we're up in a kind of a mezzanine area right. abo above from where we were. And uh, you have some pretty uh, interesting candidates here. What do we got? <laughs> We've got some nurse sharks that are in quarantine going through two different public aquariums. And we've got these for... <laughs> <laughs> for about four months, I guess now. Um, yeah, these are what five, six foot nurse sharks. Yep, and they're beautiful, and they like to be fed, so they might splash you, trying to get your attention. 
but they're definitely beautiful. And other than a public aquarium, usually in a giant tube, you would never ever see them this close up. Right. And they're great for public aquariums because they're fairly dormant. And they just, they hang out on the bottom, yep. come around once in a while. Yeah, they're one of the few shark species that doesn't have to swim constantly. Right. All right, guys, I'm still down here at this amazing place called Seagrass Farms. And I got something even more special today for you guys. This is James. James is the lab manager for Seagrass Farms. He takes care of not just the few fish you see, but all the other fish that you guys have seen in these videos, the 6,000 plus tanks. Right. James is in charge of overseeing all of that. So thanks for taking the time, James. Absolutely. Really appreciate it. So 6,000 tanks of fish. Are you the guy that uh, they were telling me, and I talked about it in my talk earlier today, uh, any staff member that works in the fish houses is empowered to put these hold stickers up. Correct. And nobody can touch those hold stickers, and it just means it's ugly, or something didn't look right, or behavior was wrong. That's a really, really cool system. You're the only one that can take those down. Yes. That's true? Yes. So you go do that, and you, you look for all the diseases and whatnot. And, Correct. Okay? So what's your what's your day and day? What do you do here on a day-to-day? -day? First, uh, when I get here, I check out uh, any of our quarantine fish that we've got going on for okay. our quarantine program. Uh, and then I'll go through, and I look at every every tank in the freshwater building. And uh, every tank. Every tank. <laughs> it's lots of squats. Then it's 4 30 and it goes home. <laughs> lot, lots of squats. Uh, that, that takes me from about 6 in the morning, uh, 6 30 in the morning till about uh, 11. Yep. And uh, then I'll move my way into the goldfish building and then uh, the saltwater building. Every day. Every day. Yeah. So in your lab, what are your tools that you have available? Like when things come up, whatever they may be. Because you're not going to be treating in a system, per se, for a lot of the stuff. You want to isolate as much as you can. Correct. And all your systems give you those capabilities of isolating everything. Correct. Yes, we do uh, both system treatments uh, for the water itself, yep. because we have a lot of commingled waters. Yep. Uh, and then we also do individual tank treatments. Okay. Uh, in the lab, I have a, a binocular uh, microscope, a fairly high-quality uh, Olympus. Okay. Uh, we also uh, do water testing in-house uh, three times a week. Or, um, Twice a week on freshwater, uh, five days a week in saltwater, okay. uh, and uh, I have an incubator so I can uh, culture run culture plates on uh, bacterial infections. Yeah, the stuff that you're dealing with, we uh, I spent earlier this week I was at the University of Florida with Dr. Tom Waltzik. Right. Oh, yeah. We spent a whole day with him doing stuff and everything like that. And then we went and toured the, the the fish labs and everything like that. And, like the stuff these guys, the tools these guys have available to them is crazy, but. All these diseases and parasites, no, maybe not as much the parasites, but the viruses and stuff, these things are always constantly evolving. So yes. you think you know how to deal with something, and the next time it comes in, it's slightly different. Right. Right? Yes. And you don't know. <laughs> yes. yes. That's what uh, they need you for. Right. And uh, we work with Tom uh, quite a bit. Yeah, okay. he, he does some of our uh, better shirt testing for some of our customers. So how did you get into doing this here at Seagrass? What's your background? I'm, a, I'm actually from the industry. Uh, okay. I grew up here uh, about seven miles that way okay. uh, so uh, I learned to learn to swim in a fish pond okay so yeah. but on the pathology side or like on the like what what do you you're not just pathology does that pertain to just parasites uh no 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 water quality okay uh, but full full range of fish health okay uh, so uh, just uh, my background in the industry uh, and uh, was very science-based in school so cool so you got it from the guy himself. This guy takes care of you guys might have one or two tanks at home. This guy's got how many tanks? Is it six thousand fresh water or six, did we talk six thousand total? Six thousand fresh water. Six thousand fresh water. You don't do the salt? Are you yes. the salt guy as well? Yes. yes. So you're everything. Everything. So this is the man himself. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> so there you have it, my friends. Directly from the man himself. Seagrass Farms, as you can tell, is truly a global leader in aquaculture. So that's it for part three. Stay tuned for part four. We're going to head over to the other facility and see what Sandy's got hiding over there. It's outstanding.